Hey, it's JC1424 once again with NASCAR Heat 4. And in this episode of our season, as Brandon fucking Jones, we're going to be completing race 31, which is the O'Reilly Auto Parts 300 at Texas Motor Speedway. In the last episode, we raced at Kansas, and we finished in second place to Cole Custer after a restart with five laps to go. So, of course, Cole Custer, he got the win, and he is locked into the final four, which is going to be at Homestead in a couple races. But this is the second race of the round of eight at Texas. We won at Texas, race six of this season, so I think we can expect to do pretty darn good here, just to make up for the fact that I might do bad at ISM Raceway, or as it's now known, Phoenix. I haven't had a good history at this track in the NASCAR Heat games. But Chris Rebell, he gained some good ground at Kansas. He is three points below the cutoff line, and then it's a tie between Michael Lynette, Austin Sindrick, and then there's only eight points between all these drivers below the cut line right now, and just now, Gardner and Greg are actually tied for seventh. So this gimmick is really just making a, a, a crazy show out of the playoffs right now. I don't want to imagine it's been this close in all these freaking races. But Texas, Texas is going to be a night race. And Texas is my home track, so I got the Juniper car. But it's a night race. This means I need to turn this lamp on because we, we need some light in the video. It's about to get really dark in here. But it's Texas, so I like this track. And we're going Texas! We're going yeehaw this shit! How are you? Let me put my hat on. I don't know how to put a hat on. But, got my hat. No shirt necessary. Let's do this! I did loosen this car up a little bit. Because it's an Xfinity Series car and it's always so freaking tight. But that might cause us to get loose off of turn four, which is something that happens very often. I went kind of wide into turn one, so that's probably going to entire lap. Anything that could have made of it. I, I know it's bright, sunny day in the game right now. But I can't change what time it is in real life. You shit. Okay, I know turns three and four, you can go in your full throttle. But I have not put that much effort into angling these corners properly. And it gets loose off of turn four. I might want to go back to having it on just the, the default setup instead of loosening it up. 18th? I started better at Kansas. Now, Kansas, that car was tight. I don't think this car is going to be this tight this track because you get loose more often here. Let's see what we got here. Chris Rubell starting fifth, nice to see. And Michael Annette, who is three points in front of him right now, starts in second place. Cosgrala got the pull. I mean, Cosgrala used to be pretty good. I don't know if he still is good. Is he? I don't know. Uh, Justin Allgaier, tenth. Chase Briscoe, eighth. Cole Custer starting right next to Chris Rubell. No drags in seventh. Wow. But Chris Rubell is the second best driver in the playoffs uh, as far as qualifying goes going into this race. And now we're 17th, so someone in front of us got sent to the back, and there are a lot of playoff drivers in front of us, so... Was it one of them? It was Chris Bell, so that's good. Cosgrala's car is really fast. Cosgrala, on the pole. Yeah, you didn't need to tell us that. And Noah Gregson, yes, a playoff driver failed pre-race inspection. I mean, he did so bad at Kansas. And he, he, well, he was running good, and he won a stage, but then he wound up finishing way, way at the back. So he lost a bunch of ground, and now he's eight points behind. And this does not help him at all. Like, he was in the top four drivers going into this round. I think he just really choked all this away. And I think the same thing happened. Didn't the same thing happen to Noah Gragson in the 2019 Texas race, this race right here? Because I remember, like, Noah Gragson had wrecked off a turn for him. was, like, sliding to the infield, or maybe it was him. And then it caused him to not be able to make it into the next round. I think something along those lines happened. Because I remember watching that race, I was kind of like just going for a walk, and I had Fubo TV on my phone, and I was watching the, the Texas Race and Xfinity Series, just seeing how everything played out. Oh my goodness, Tyler Reddick dropping back, and it makes it three wide. We're fast, we're climbing our way to the field. There's Chris Rebell up there. He's uh, holding his own, trying to hold back Chase Briscoe. I think Chase Briscoe's getting underneath him right now, though. Here's Cole Custer in 8th place. He's going to run the outside, not getting anywhere. Same goes for Dustin Algar right behind me. And I think that is the 21 of Cosgrala still leading this thing, so he's doing a good job. Let's not get loose off of turn 4. I left it on that plus 1 new setup, by the way. So I'm risking the possibility of spinning this starting thing off the corner. And it, it, it's even more likely whenever you get to the end of the run, your tires are warm because it already starts getting loose because of that. I thought that was Cosgrove leading this thing, but it might have been Michael and Nett because they got similar paint schemes, but Michael and Nett's car is uh, white and red all around, and then you've got Cosgrove's car is black. 
bumper right here. And he's falling back. He's on the outside, kind of holding up a teammate. Chris Rebelli, you could go around him. Christopher, go go around him. Or not, whatever. Get, get fucked. I, I have advice, but you can't tell your teammates to move over past the guy. I'm going to push him. Okay, he's getting the run off of turn two. Okay, will you, will you pass him now? I'm giving you the room to pass him. I know you need it more than, than I do. Okay, he's going to try to pass him on the outside. Okay, you... you well, that didn't work either. Well, he's going to be on the inside going into the the next stage. <laughs> I'm at a loss for words. I don't even... I like Not for any reason. I was just trying to find out what all this dumb NASCAR gimmick crap is called. The, the next stage. Play NASCAR Thunder 2004. Like, stage what? What is the All-Star Race? The All-Star Race at Texas Motor Speedway. Oh, boy. No pit stops after the first stage. I'm going to be starting on the outside of my teammate. So you're on the inside. You, you go. You get it. There's Jeremy Clements starting third right here. So he's having really good. And it seems Chase Briscoe, yeah, he just won the first stage. So um, I mean, he's already in the top four, isn't he? So I don't think that's really concerning for me. I think Chase Briscoe is already fine. So, I mean, if he's doing really good in this race, then I, it doesn't bother me. As long as it's not someone that is under the cutoff line or you know, right above it. And Christopher Bell is doing good to gain points and all the guys that possibly could. I don't want to hit because we're belt. I want to get to the inside because I can't do anything on the outside. Like, this track is newly paved and it's made in such a way that you have to be at the bottom of the track or... Oh, God. You have to be at the bottom of the track in the turns. Otherwise, you're not doing shit. But, yes, I... The car drove off the track right there. It got loose and then it kept getting loose. Which sucks. Ryan Sieg is giving me a shove. Ryan Sieg still running good. Good for the sponsor. Even though they're not sponsoring him anymore, but it's like even though they're done sponsoring Ryan C, he's still got the opportunity right here to make him look good in the game. We got five laps in this stage, which is an extra lap. And these tires are getting worn. This car keeps on getting loose. I don't know. Should I have decided? Damn it, Sieg. First you're pushing me, then you're pushing me up the track. But should I have decided to just leave it at the full setup? Because I. I People are wanting to spin this darn thing going off of turn four. We send it under Austin Cindric. Opportunity for him to get less points. Which would be good because I'm trying to keep him from making it to the next round. Ryan C keeps on racing me and I'm getting loose all over the damn place. It's like playing NASCAR Dirt Daytona all over again. You got freaking Justin Algar getting his nose up my ass. Okay, Justin Algar wants to push me. He's pushing me. I am so sideways right now. Okay. Get the draft from mine and see. Pull away from these guys behind me. Would like to. And I would like to pass Ryan C. It'd be, it'd be a good help for me, but I, I kinda can't do that. Just trying not to get loose. Now we're gonna set up a pass going into turn one. Underneath them. Gotta let off early because of the angle we have going here. And we made it. Okay. Chase Risco is running the very top of the track. Chris Rebell is way at the bottom trying to make some moves. Oh gosh, Tyler Reddick is blowing up or something because he's slowing all these guys down behind him. I'm on the apron. Oh my god. It's, it's so out. It's so loose that it won't stop doing things on its own. It kill Tyler Reddick. <laughs> like you, I try to go in the corner and the car just starts turning all on its own because my tires are worn. It's strange. It's the strange days. What, what's the name of the, the Netflix series? S strange? Stranger Things? There we go. <laughs> These are This is the Stranger Things, the worn tires. Okay, well, there's the right side tires wearing down so much. Even the left side tires are starting to get below 50. So, yeah, this, this track is not supposed to wear down the tires as much because it's so new. But I guess it just does. But we'll get four tires. Enough fuel to fill up the tank. Probably the same thing as Kansas, where we fill up the tank, but we can't get to the amount of laps that there is uh, left in the race. We're going to skip some anyways, though. So we're coming to this restart in fifth. Did I finish fifth in the last stage? I thought I got sixth. I might not have been paying attention. Maybe we gained a spot on somebody. Okay, well, Chris Rebell's not in front of me. He finished in front of me, so what happened to Chris Rebell? 
game. What happened to Chris Rubel game? Oh man. Oh my god. Oh my god. They're, I didn't realize how big a run these guys are having behind me. I see Chris Rubel now. He is right there He's inside of Austin Hendrick making moves. You know what? I, I don't need to win shit. I, I don't need to win shit. So you go, you clear me. There you go. I am going to be the best teammate in the history of NASCAR. Blocking Cindric. And I'm going to block this 11 car. This is Justin Haley, isn't it? Yeah, in the 11 car. And whoever else tries to get by. You, you go. You go, girl. I mean, you're not a girl, but you go, girl. Oh, boy. We got three laps to go. And... My right front is at 18%. Oh my god! Which increases the looseness. But you know, the AI, at this point in the run, they're way slower because that's how their tires wear down. But with how difficult it's becoming to drive this car, I don't even know if I actually could pass Chris Bell in these two laps we got right here. But the thing is, I really don't want to because I've been waiting for him to win the race all season. He still hasn't done yet. If he wins this one, he's going to the Final Four. Um, we're low on gas. But I'm definitely not concerned about that one. So now we got enough. Push. Push. Look how far behind everybody else is. You got this, Chris Bell. You, you go. Come on. Come on. I think this right front will survive it just fine. We got one lap left and it's at 10%. I don't know about wearing down my right front tire. 10% in, in one lap. Boop. Giving him the pushes. He's getting the pushes. Should I try to win this race? I'm kind of scared to try winning this race. Let's make it look like I'm trying to win this race. Here we go. Here we go, guys. There we go. Oh, no. I overdrove the corner. Oh, no. I'm Carl Edwards. Oh, man. And I'm driving the 19 car. Go figure. Everybody's taking pit stops. What the hell? Well, not Chris Rebell. Chris Rebell finally wins the race this season, and we finish second place right behind him. I'll make it for a good thumbnail, too. And here are the race results. Christopher Bell with the win, now locked into the Final Four, along with Cole Custer. And I guess I could say I'm locked in as well, because we were 66 points of the good going into Texas. I finished in second place, and I got a bunch of stage points. So I, I'm i pretty sure that I should still be uh, to the good on points. So that should leave just one spot left for the Final Four, which might be taken up by Chase Briscoe right now, because... He won the first and second stage in this race and finished in third place. So that's two playoff points and then 20 stage points for getting 10 in both of the stages. And then he finished so freaking good. So right now out should be Michael Annette, Austin Sendrick, Justin Allgaier, who all finished in the top 10 in this race. And then Noah Gragson, who has been terrible for the past few races in this entire round. And I don't even know why. Yeah, he finished 37th place. And said he two laps down, but he wasn't the one that blew up. I swear he wasn't. Austin Hill, yeah, I know I saw the 61 car on pit road, but I saw another car that was like white and red on pit road. And I don't know who that was. Kaz Grawl, he got the pole for this race. He finished 29th. I don't, these results are confusing me. I don't know how these drivers wound up in these places. And it seems that my assumptions were completely correct because Cole Custer, Christopher Bell, they're locked in on wins. And then there's us 63 points above the cutoff line. It's damn near impossible for us to lose that many points in one race. But, I mean, if we lost a bunch of points and then Chase Briscoe gained points and then maybe someone else won, then I guess it's like a doomsday scenario. But that's not going to happen. I mean, we're, we're going to do good at Phoenix, okay? We're going to do okay at Phoenix, okay? Okay. Okay. And then there's Noel Grax, and he's 62 points behind. So the only way he's getting in is if he wins a race. I think the same can go for Justin Allgaier and maybe even Austin Sindrick because they're just so many points behind. But Mike Lynette, he's got a battle up against Chase Briscoe to see if he can gain them seven points and make it in before it's too late. Thanks for watching this episode of NASCAR Heat 4 with Brian Bucket Jones! And next up, race 32, the final race of the round of eight, the last race before the final race of the season, the final four. It's going to be the Desert Diamond West Valley Casino 200 ISM Raceway. Or, yeah, Phoenix, as I was just saying. So, I know we ain't going to win there. That's not going to happen. But uh, next weekend, let's see if we can win at Homestead, Miami. And, and win this championship with Brand Jones, even though that's something that should never happen. We're going to use a Menards car at Phoenix because I don't even like Phoenix. And I don't think that race matters at all. See you next time. That's that. And episode over.